Hey there! Today I would like to talk about this ink. This is diamine ink, and in particular this is ancient copper. Uh, I got some requests to uh, do that ink as an encyclopedia entry, and I had some people on YouTube ask me about it too. Uh, so I thought this would definitely warrant me buying the ink. I was actually looking at it for a while uh, before that, so... I can tell you, it's. I only got it yesterday, so I haven't used it a whole lot yet, but I did use it in five pens for the Encyclopedia. Um, it's a very interesting ink. Nicely shaded, especially in wider nibs, broader nibs, but I guess that's kind of usual. Um, it's a nice... they chose the name well. It definitely evokes feelings of copper. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Of course, it's very difficult to, to put a color like, like copper in an ink. I mean, black is fairly easy, but um, I think they did a good job, and the ink seems to flow well. I've never had any problems with the diamond ink, and I, I think by now I own about 10 or something. Um, very nice inks, work well, flow well, little feathering, so pretty cool. So, I hope this review is going to be useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so there we go with Diamine Ancient Copper. We'll start with some fine writing. It's a fairly light brown now, but I, I, I think that already you can see that copper is not a, a bad name. Medium. The Lazy Dog. Do we know of any copper-collared dogs? Well, I guess that a fox is actually not bad. That's kind of coppery. Broad. dog. And then we have an italic nib. I really don't want to um, sort of promote this pen, but this is the uh, Italics Parsons Essential pen, and this is an oblique broad nib, uh, sorry, uh, an Italic broad nib, and it is fantastic. Every time I use it, I'm, I'm surprised by how phenomenal it is. That's all I say. Especially on smooth paper, that nib is fantastic. Okay, so there we have it. Now, as you can see, we start to see some nice shading. You see it in the italic nib, you see it in the broad nib, you see it in the medium nib, you don't really see it in the fine nib, but that's just what, what happens with fine nibs. Um, very nice. Definitely copper-like. I think what we're going to have to do is a single, double, and triple passes test. One, two, and three. We'll start with just one pass, if only the pen would write. 
There we go. One, soon to be two, and soon to be three. Now look at that, isn't that a beautiful color? I'm glad people suggested this because it's uh, maybe not an ink I would have gotten otherwise and it's, it's a pretty nice ink. Let's do a little bit of flex writing to give you a somewhat better idea. So here we would have flex don't real rope milk love there we go. What we have as here is diamine. Oh, come on. Too much railroading. Just squeeze some ink into the feed. So now it's highly saturated, but I guess you can live with that. Die mine. Ancient. Copper. Now, when I thought the, uh, when I saw this for the first time. I actually thought it would be blue. You see, Dutch police officers wear blue outfits, and I thought ancient copper would be an old policeman or something. But I was wrong. Just for the record, I'm not actually that crazy. Okay. I make a joke. Medium. I'm trying to squeeze some springiness out of this nib too to give you an idea of what shading you would get. This is not really a soft nib, copper. So that's a little difficult, but you know. As you can see, it's a nice and wet ink. I'm sorry about the lighting, but this is the best I can do. Um, right now, what I'm seeing here is a beautiful, beautiful shading, going from a light brown to a much darker reddish brown. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up. I hope it will be more visible in the, uh, the stills uh, I'll take later, but it's, it's pretty impressive. Also, it's kind of dry, so I'll do a second pass. There too, that seemed to be dry, apart from that little bit. I'll do a third pass later, but first we've got to do some broad writing. I'm thoroughly enjoying this color, I have to tell you, so it's really interesting and I really, I'm really looking forward to putting this in some pens that I have that, that really, really shade well, um, such as the Visconti Opera Elements. I always call that the king of shade because it, it has a, a nice and very springy nib which really brings out the uh, shading qualities of an ink. If you hear some weird noises, Eric and Dan, my two pet rats, are eating stuff and foraging for food. So sometimes they just throw over cardboard boxes in their cage, etc. 
copper. All right. We have to do a water test of some kind. Um, how are we doing on wetness then? It's still a little wet. I'll come back to that in a second. A water test. So here we have this 6mm Pilot Parallel again. Let's do a bit of a... D for diamine. And we take a medium nib and we write a little bit. And then we'll see how much water punishment that can take. But before we do that, this has to dry up, and this seems to be a pretty wet ink, so that's going to take a while. I do think this looks pretty dry to me, and that part is not really. I'll just grab a sheet of blotting paper, cheat a little bit there, just so that we can move on, otherwise it's going to take a long time. It was pretty much dry. Third pass. There we go. So with a highly, 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 highly saturated pen, I think you would get a very, very dark brown. And again, I say, look, I think you can see it, even in this video with these lighting circumstances, this beautiful shading from... Is that auburn? I guess this is more auburn. So a light, <laughs> a light auburn to a much darker auburn. It's, it's, I think it's beautiful. Very, very nice very well shaded ink, just you know, just the way I like my inks. And also quite wet, um, which is also something I like, so that's all very interesting. This is dry, so I think we're going to put some water to that. I've got the strong feeling this is going to disappear entirely, but we'll see. Still waiting for the uh, big capital there to dry. Um, you know what, we'll just start working on a scorecard for the ink. Well, how about that? So, some things we can take into account. Cleaning. Well, I got this ink yesterday. I haven't yet cleaned the pen. So I'll have to write down no clue, because I honestly don't know, and I want to be honest about this. Um, I would assume this being a fairly strongly you know, um, saturated brown, uh, it would take some time to clean it out of a pen. On the other hand, in my experience, diamine inks, I think I have about 10 now, are all very well behaved and not particularly difficult to, to clean out of pens, so I wouldn't expect any serious problems. Bleed through. Well, we'll just have to see that in a second. Color. I would say rich brown is in order here. Shading. Well, I would, I would say shading is excellent. Very nice shading. You don't really see it in a fine nib. I'll just scroll up again. You don't really see a lot of shading there, but even there I think you see a little bit of line ver of color variation. Uh, it's just very difficult to, to make a, a fine nib shade at all. Flow. Well, I'd say that's very good. You saw that some pens had a little bit of startup issues, uh, so it's but you know once they work, I haven't had any hard starts. And you know, honestly, I, I inked up the pens yesterday evening and just left them all night without doing anything, so, you know, I guess some hard starts can, can be accepted there. Uh, feathering. I have 
to check that out. On this paper I see no feathering, but I don't recall seeing a lot of feathering on Rhodia at all, so... Drying time. I'd say that is medium to long. It depends a little bit on the pen. In a fine nib or a medium nib like this, it's okay. But you saw that with the... I mean, this, this capital is still... Sorry. This capital is still wet right there. So, it, it, you know, it may take a bit. Um, I'll just grab some a cloth here. This is going to discolor it a little, perhaps, but getting rid of the water. I think most of this. Whoops, sorry. Most of this is dry now. So, going to do the water test. Very interesting, we'll return to that in a second. Try to leave that in view. Okay, uh, then we have the uh, waterproofness. What a magnificent timing. Waterproofness. Um, well, what, what do we make of that? If you look at this, you can see that there's still some reading left. It's still a legible, but when you look at this, you see that it's gone. Um, I have seen inks that just completely disappear. This will not really help you, but at least it's still a little legible. I would say medium at best. Right, if you can read that. Now we need some cheap copier paper, and I have not prepared that, I've forgotten it. So, I'll just grab some sheets. And he's back. Okay, I'm going to dry out that. There we go. And some copier paper. Right. Let us start with some fine writing. Fine writing. The ancient copper. didn't have a retirement plan. Medium. Therefore, everybody thought He was on the take. Broad. But he said... I will bet you a farthing. to a bent copper italic that I am not a bent copper just ancient All right. I want to see 
a lot of ink here. Well, yeah, something like that. Uh, so my pen, cap, good to find the cap. And I need some flex writing. I want to see how prone to feather this ink is. Feather. This is a feather, I guess. A little bit of... Uh, a lot of fantasy. Okay. And you know what? Let's also do a little bit of waterproofness testing here. Just one dash. Want that to dry? Okay, let's let's do a short evaluation of what we see here. Um, I think again on this cheaper paper, the fine nib uh, doesn't give you a whole lot of, of of shading or color variation. In the medium nib, it's already more pronounced. I don't think it is as pronounced as with the Rhodia paper because this paper is a bit more absorbent. But still, I think it gives you a, a nice bit of shading. With broad, the shading becomes apparent. Here too, it's not as clear as with Rhodia paper, but who uses Rhodia paper on a daily basis? Uh, so you're, when you're at work, I think this is what you can expect. Italic, sort of same story. Um, what I don't really see a lot is feathering, both with the, with the broad nib and with the italic nib. Um, when it gets very wide, so this nib, for example, uh, then feathering becomes apparent, and you do really start to see it. Um, you definitely see it with the flex nib where you lay down a lot of ink. There's a lot of feathering right there. You can see that. Um, so you know, apparently it is. You know, this this can be an issue, but this is cheaper paper. So that's quite a bit of water. Let's see what that does. I think it's just going to ruin the ink. So, there were two things we had to answer. One was bleed-through. Well, on the Rhodia paper, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of bleed-through, except here, but that was a 6mm nib and pretty much water poured over it. And here, which is three passes with four said 6mm nib. Apart from that, things seem to be pretty safe. There's a little bit of bleed-through there, but that's probably... Yeah, that's uh, trying to put a lot of pressure on a broad nib, so I guess that's okay bleed through on the cheaper paper. Well, that's a bit more apparent, but it's not that bad. You see it with the broad nib, you see it a little bit with the italic nib, you definitely see it with the mega broad nib and the flex writing. But I guess, you know, you know at work you don't do a lot of flex writing. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we've got. So I would say that Bleed through is good, and feathering is minor, so that will be, uh, oh, I'd say very good. It did very well. Okay, so there you have it. Encyclopedia entry for dye mine, ancient copper. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.